first time pastoring, have a little more time behind the wheel. This company wants you to skip the dealership and make the car buying process run like a well-oiled machine. Is there a traffic jam ahead? Or will this big idea be nirvana for investors? What do we do with Carbon? I mean, some stocks just don't know when to quit, and this is why. The web-based used car dealership has taken up the entire industry. Regular viewers know I'm a big fan of used cars for years because consumers want bargains, and these days, cars last longer than ever. The whole complex has been doing well, but Carbon is something else entirely. Here's a company that's trying to revolutionize the way we buy vehicles. No dealerships, no strong-arm sales tactics. Just go to the website and pick up your car from one of the giant vending machine style garages or just have it delivered straight to your house. Now there are a lot of skeptics here. Uh, 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 people fretting about how quickly the uh, Carvana is burning for its cash, how much debt it's taking on. These are all legitimate worries, but every time I've listened to bears, the stock is powered higher. Anyway, it's no wonder why Carvana sales more than doubled the first half of the year. And the stock's up more than 150% for 2019, including a major move after the company reports some really incredible moments last month. Can you keep on Let's take a closer look first time with Ernie Garcia III, Chairman and CEO of Carvana. Learn more about his company and his prospects. Mr. Garcia, welcome to Man Money. Thank you. Good to see you, Ernie. Good to see you here. Well, first, as I say to people who are first time, I want you to walk through what you do because it is indeed revolutionary and it is indeed disruptive. One of the largest part of the planet. Sure. So uh, we sell cars online. Um, our mission is to change the way people buy cars. So customers come to our website. We have about 18 to 20,000 cars in inventory. Uh, they can search through all those cars. They can you know, get approved for and select financing. They can get a trade value for their car. Uh, they sign contracts online. We then deliver the car to their doorsteps the next day. Uh, they get a seven day return policy. And by doing it all a different way, we're able to save them a uh, very significant amount of money. Well, this is actually the opposite of pretty much everything this company does. It is. Yeah. I mean, but from the return to the idea that it can come to your house. Uh, to the number of cars you have. Isn't that quite different from a typical dealer? So something I think is great about our business model is because we, we have a national inventory that's available to customers everywhere, all the cars anywhere in the country can be bought and brought to a customer's door. Um, so that gives them a lot more selection than they normally get at a dealership with maybe 100 to 200 cars a lot. So uh, people who question your model say it's too good to be true, that there's no way you'll ever make money because it, at this pace, it's too good a deal for the consumer, which I always like. Uh, what do you say to people saying that in, in, in the end you really can't get profitable? And, and also, the, the trajectory of what you were losing and what you're not. Yeah, well, so we're growing very fast, right? So let's start with that. Last quarter we grew by 95% units, we grew by 108% revenue, uh, we grew by 134% customers interacted with, 188% cars we bought from customers. So that does require some investment. Um, that said, despite all that growth, um, over the last three years we've gone from losing about 23 cents on every dollar of revenue to three cents last quarter. Um, that's a big move in just three years. And we did that while you know, increasing the size of the company roughly tenfold. So okay, so uh, let's say tomorrow you wanted to be profitable. Uh, you could be, I think, judging by that trajectory, but is that really the goal of the disruptor? So you know, here's an interesting stat. So last quarter we were about 40 base points this market. So for every thousand cars sold in the US, we were approximately four. Um, I think when you're that small relative to this opportunity, it's a trillion dollar opportunity. I think it's hard to say that now is the time to take your foot off the gas. And so, you know, we're definitely accelerating into this opportunity because it is so big. Um, but despite all that acceleration, all that investment growth, we're still making a ton of progress financially. We talked with you about, about your company, we're very fond of it, and the vending machine model. I, I, I think that's very exciting. We've got some graphics that shows what it means, but walk us through that and how that's doing. Yeah, well, so I think the vending machine is really interesting. I, I think the view that I have is one of the ways the world's changed in the last 10 or 15 years is customers are able to communicate more with other customers out there more easily through social media and other channels. And so I think it's important now in this world to build your marketing dollars into the experience you give customers because then they're going to talk about it with their friends. They're going to drive by on the street and say, what is that? And then you give them an excellent experience and that serves as marketing dollars as well, which is just more efficient overall. So the, the vending machine serves that purpose. Okay, uh, where you have what in Atlanta it does incredibly well. Yeah, so we've got uh, 20 vending machines now. Um, we've got about 140 markets overall. So we, we, uh, we don't have vending machines in every market, but we're working on that. Now, you mentioned uh, cars you buy from people. That's also integral to your business model. It is. 
is. So an interesting thing about buying cars from customers, right, it's the car buying market in general, is that really all used car transactions are just trades between people. It just goes through this elaborate mechanism of a customer goes to one dealership and then that dealer goes and sells it at auction, another dealer, and then that dealer sells it to a customer. And so if we can collapse all that, buy from a customer and sell directly to a customer, um, there's a lot of savings in that that we can share with our customers. Same time, the auction houses do seem like they do. Well, we're we're a big participant in that market. Um, you know, we're one of the fastest. Or we are the fastest one out of the retailer out there. So we've got great relations with them as well. Uh, some people say, "Well, listen, we'll never have enough money to be able to get profitable. It'll take too long, and in the interim, they got to keep raising capital." Uh, I saw you did a capital raise before. I'm um, totally hopeful that you're not going to do one after the shop. <laughs> well, so we uh, we ended last quarter with a little less than 850 million in, in liquidity resources. Um, you know, we had an EBITDA dollar loss about 32 million last quarter, so that's pretty small compared to the capital resource that we've got. Um, and so we feel really good about our capital position. If the Fed were to cut rates dramatically, you think you'd be more likely? You know what? I, I think um, the direct impact would likely be that because we do have a finance operation associated with. with Why not? I think it's a good one. It is. It's, it's a it's a great part of the business. It, it makes customer experiences simpler because they can get approved for select financing in seconds and. We don't have to check with any third parties. That's you know mm -hmm. our credit scoring engine, you know our, our pricing engines. All of that goes into driving what they're able to do, uh, and then they can just click the button and get finance right there. All right, now Ernie, a lot of people watching the show and they're thinking, why didn't I think of this? And what can I do to think like Ernie Garcia? I need you to go back in time. What made you think you could do it? It, 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 it really kind of disrupt the industry by the way that auto nation and car stuff they already disrupted. Um, you know. I suppose it's, um, I, I'm a curious person, so you always try to think through what you can do. Um, I, I was probably, I was probably too vain to believe that we could make a change, um, but, but had a bunch of friends that were willing to take that leap with me and be just as vain as I was. Oh, you talk about friends who were working with you or would lend you money? What did they do? Again, keep in mind that people were watching, you're saying, I want to be Ernie Garcia. <laughs> well, you should, you, should, you should retire to all those people out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, so I've got a, several really close friends that I was lucky enough to start the company with. Um, and then we've, we've hired you know, thousands of people since that have brought the same passion to it that, that we brought to it. And I think we've been extremely lucky to have the success we've had so far. Well, I'm glad you said luck because it does play a role, but I think that you have also skill and hard work because you've got that going for you. That's Ernie Garcia, Chairman CEO of Carbon, a fascinating company. Get money's back into the break.